Hello and welcome to Communication Conflict Resolution. My name is Michael Betker. I am your instructor. Welcome back from spring break and welcome to week 11 in our course here. This is our second week speaking on emotions. So if you'll remember, it's been a while since you have even thought probably about this class, but uh, we did start talking about emotions back in week nine. And we had, of course, week 10 off. Here we are back again now talking about emotions. So we'll carry on with that information over the next couple weeks. That's my information there. As we know, you can reach me in many ways. The best way probably is via email. That's betkerm at uww.edu. Of course, open invitation to meet with me face-to-face -face as well on Mondays and Wednesdays from 2 to 4.30 or by appointment. So let's proceed with this week. So here's what we got going on in week 11. Again, like I mentioned, we're talking about emotions. Um, what I'd like you to do to start with, obviously, is again watching this video. So again, like I always say, if you are watching the video now, you're off to a good start. The first thing you'll want to do probably is read a very short article entitled, How Do Smart People Deal With Difficult People? That's going to set us up for our Thursday post number five, in which we discuss difficult people from our own perspective. So you'll do that on Thursday. That's worth 25 points. Let's do it midnight. Again, this is a weekly thing. So most often, in fact, everything is due either on Thursdays or Sundays at midnight. Um, all posts, all of our posts are due every Thursday. Well, not every Thursday, but when we have them due, they're due on Thursdays at midnight. And then, of course, on Sunday, we have something called How to Criticize with Kindness, which I'll discuss here today in this lecture. Prior to that, I'd like you to watch uh, a video. It's a really cool video about uh, uh, crucial conversation, something I, try, I trained others on in uh, my professional life prior to becoming a teacher. So crucial conversation is a very good way uh, of, this, of leading us into uh, this discussion regarding how we criticize with kindness. So that's it for the week. A total of 85 points here in week 11. So we're easing back into it. And let's proceed here talking about the article how smart people deal with difficult people. So it's a short article, like I said. Um, you know, we've all dealt with difficult people for, before. Um, difficult people essentially defy logic. Uh, we all have our stories to tell, and I'm hoping to hear some of yours this week. Uh, some folks are blissfully unaware of the negative impact they have on those around them, and others seem to, to derive satisfaction from creating chaos and pushing other pre people's buttons. So maybe you're the button pusher, maybe you're the one who has the buttons pushed. Either way, they create unnecessary complexity, strife, and worst of all, stress. So stress is not a good thing, as we know, right? Stress causes a long-term health problem. So one thing we're going to learn in this class, and I think specifically the next two weeks here, about uh, emotions and how they can have a negative impact on us physically. Lots of studies uh, have shown along the way here that stress can have a lasting negative impact on the brain. So exposure to even a day's worth of stress. Okay, so studies have long shown that stress can have a lasting negative impact on the brain. Exposure to even a few days of stress can compromise the effectiveness of neurons in our hippocampus. And next week we'll talk more about the physiological effects of stress and on, of conflict uh, on our brains. Uh, but obviously, as we know, the hippocampus is an important brain area responsible for reasoning and memory. So weeks at a time of stress can cause reversible damage, irreversible damage uh, in some cases, and months of stress can permanently destroy neurons. Uh, stress is, uh, of course, then for that reason, a formidable threat to our success. And when it gets out of control, our brains and our performance tend to suffer. So where we have this stress most often is at work because obviously we deal with lots of folks, now folks that you may not be friends with in every case, uh, that can cause a lot of stress. So what this article is about really is helping us understand and give, giving us clues. And it's a short article, so it's not a lot of reading here, but I'd like you to kind of look through this and discover some things maybe about yourself that you could do better. So let me get the long and short of this whole lecture here in this uh, next couple of weeks here is to teach us something about our own emotional intelligence, or EQ, um, or in some cases listed as EI. So next week we'll have you take a test on what your, your current level of emotional intelligence is, but really the ability to manage our emotions and remain calm under pressure has a direct link, link to our performance. So lots of studies and research on that, but uh, one in particular from a company called Talent Smart 
that was conducted um, by, uh, you know, on a million or more people found that 90% of top performers are skilled at managing their emotions in times of stress in order to remain calm and in control. So one of their greatest gifts is the ability to neutralize difficult people. And that's really what we're talking about here. Okay. So now if, if you don't know who you're dealing with, who may be the difficult person, so you may want to look in the mirror because maybe you're the difficult person. Um, either way, I've run across numerous effective strategies that many people smarter than me employ when dealing with difficult people. So hope to share those with you today. Um, so what follows in this article, I think, are some of the best uh, of those. So read on, and obviously, like I said, in about 15 minutes, you'll know a little bit more about this. So obviously, it's how we handle our emotional uh, outputs. And it starts by kind of acknowledging kind of who we are. So that's really what emotional intelligence is all about, is really understanding kind of what buttons we push or what buttons are pushed by others in us to create certain emotional re responses. So using emotional intelligence in confrontation and conflict can really lend a lot of, of help uh, in your daily activities and obviously have a physiological positive effect if you're able to manage it effectively. Some tips I want to share with you guys uh, on managing your emotion. And again, we'll talk more about this next week as well. First and foremost, knowing what your emotional triggers are. So for me, I tend to get a little stressed out when I drive. And I realize that uh, a lot of times I'm just a very imp imp an impatient driver. So for me, when I get behind the wheel, I have to tell myself, hey, listen, okay, people go at different speeds. You may want to go faster. You need to slow down and not get so charged up when somebody makes a mistake in front of you. So that's something I have to tell myself pretty much every day. Now I, I commute to and from Whitewater uh, pretty much every day, Monday through Thursday. So that's literally, literally almost two hours uh, in the car every day for me when I go to Whitewater. So uh, it certainly behooves me to spend that time productively. Uh, conversely, obviously you want to know what might bug others uh, from you as well. So that's sometimes not always easy to do. Um, so when I say look in the mirror, uh, that's what we do when we think about our own emotional intelligence. But know that you might have some uh, proclivities and certain behaviors that you're not aware of that may um, cause others um, their, their version of strife. So being aware and taking stock of that is super important. Of course, the third point here, appreciate that people have different emotional responses. That's important as well, and that's something you'll learn as you get to know people better. But some folks um, go quiet, others uh, get escalated pretty quickly in all points in between. So it's important to understand that we all have our own ways of dealing with emotional stress. Understand that every case, emotions can actually escalate conflict. Um, so you got to be careful there, and that's why it's so important to be aware. That's the first step is to be aware of the emotions that might be charging a situation. And then what we'll do here in this article is you learn how to de-escalate emotions and conflict. So that's, that's super critical, obviously, not just for you, but the, the other party as well or other parties. Um, so we'll learn, about, we'll learn about that today as well. I'd like you to start by watching this video here regarding Crucial Conversations. And this particular clip, which is uh, in this module here uh, for week 11, you'll see uh, a public speaker who's awesome talking about Crucial, crucial Conversations and use an example of he and his son. Obviously, after a little while, you'll show and you'll see his logic behind how he comes to a solution uh, with regard to a potential conflict with his son. So enjoy that video. Um, it is a pretty cool story, and that helps set up what we're going to be doing here. So obviously, emotions uh, have uh, a play and uh, in a place in how we conduct ourselves with others. Uh, we've talked about this before, but the idea of silence or violence, like we do have different, uh, different responses. Some folks like to kind of be quiet and uh, are feel reserved or behave reservedly. Uh, of course, others tend to kind of skew on the other perspective on the other end with maybe not violence, but maybe something a little more strong. Either way, we are often tempted to move to either one of those two, silence or violence. Now, obviously, lots and hours, lots and hours of observation have kind of yielded this idea that the way you are about to act is largely affected by how you feel right now. So that's what emotional intelligence really is about, is really being in touch with your moment-to-moment -moment emotions. So ultimately, here's the insight for you guys here. How you feel is not a direct function of what you just saw or heard or experienced. So again, I'll use my driving example. When I see somebody uh, driving in front of me who I think may not be doing as, as good of a job as I think they could be, um, I need to kind of just take it in, in stride with that insight. Um, 
It's not how I feel at the moment, what I just saw or it explained. So how you feel is not a direct function of what you just saw, heard, or experienced. So here's a question for you guys. And again, the idea here is how do we criticize folks with kindness now? On the flip side of this, if somebody has done something that you would like to um, bring some attention to your point of view about, um, how do you go about doing that in such a way that you still maintain a good relationship? So why would you take so much time and energy to do this? Uh, well, here's the answer. It is a sound psychological strategy that transforms your opponent into a more receptive audience for your criticism or dissent, which in turn helps advance the discussion. So ultimately, if you do this the right way um, and you're able to kind of levy um, maybe some criticism that is not supercharged, you'll probably have better luck um, getting your way or at least having some sort of a conversation that's not charged with emotion. So Daniel C. Dennett is the author of many books. Um, one, of course, is Consciousness Explained here, as you see in this slide. Uh, but what he talks about here, and this is kind of a setup for our uh, Sunday project, where um, I'm going to ask you to compose a successful critical commentary using his four steps. So Daniel Dennett obviously has this question to answer with his, uh, with his books. Just how charitable are you supposed to be when criticizing the views of an opponent? Now, that's a really tricky question, but he offers us uh, some clues and gives us four steps that I'd like you to use in our upcoming Sunday project. So here are the four steps. First is you should attempt to re-express re your target's position so clearly, vividly, and fairly that your target says, you know what, thanks, I wish I'd thought of putting it that way. So in other words, you're, put, you're taking their own words and you're saying, all right, I, I'm going to demonstrate to you that I know what you're talking about by using your own words. And the best way to do that ultimately is to kind of re refashion what, what that person said slightly uh, into your own words and then bounce it back to them. And usually you'll get a response like, oh, that's that's pretty good. Or maybe, maybe I know I meant this. But either way, what happens is you find common ground through restating the comment that they made. So that's the first step, being able to re express the target's position so there's no confusion. Step two, you should list any points of agreement. So that's the key, finding common ground again, right? Especially if they are not mad, if they are not matters of general or widespread agreement. Um, either way, the more things you can list uh, where you find agreement, the better off you're going to be on the stuff maybe you don't agree on as much. So that's step two. Step three, you should mention anything you have learned from your target. So again, you know, I didn't, I wasn't aware of X, Y, or Z. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I have a slightly different perspective uh, on this particular discussion. So wherever you can, again, that kind of ties in with number two there. And then, of course, the fourth, only then are you permitted to say so much as a word of rebuttal or criticism. So as much as possible, you want to withhold any criticism or any rebuttal until you've taken all of this other information in and you've actually gone through steps one, two, and three. Okay. All right, so how to criticize with kindness. That's what this final assignment is worth 60 points. What I'd like you to do is to read through the assignment and select two of the scenarios provided. For each, you must write a response to your target of persuasion following, following the four steps that I've provided here. Okay, so I'd like you to write uh, out the dialogue in script format, taking great care to be sure that you are following the four steps for each example. This, of course, is due on Sunday at 11.59. You are to write 300 words, um, give or take, for two of these scenarios provided, okay? I'd like you to write 300 words for each, and this is due, of course, on Sunday at 11.59. Okay, that's it for this section here, a little shorter than normal, which is probably a good thing. I would say make sure you read that short article that's provided, and then, of course, watch the video, and then you're off to the races. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be here for you. Um, you've got the number, you've got the email. Good luck this week, and we'll talk to you next week.